Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria. I hope that everybody has had a good week and I hope that you're getting ready for a fantastic weekend. Students in this class, we are looking at the IELTS reading section. Specifically, we're looking at academic IELTS reading. However, for general IELTS students, you should know that your section three for reading in the general IELTS is very, very similar to the reading passages of the academic IELTS. So to get those high band scores, especially for those express entry visas, you are good to study from the academic reading passages as well, okay? And in this passage, we're going to be looking at an interesting uh, topic or an interesting um, piece of information about the city of a thousand windows. Find interest in your reading materials that will help you to improve your English faster and to get better band scores. Hi Fateh, welcome students, good to have you here with me today. Uh, students, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Check us out there. For the general IELTS, visit us at gieltshelp.com on both of our websites. We've got lots of materials to help you improve for the reading section, as well as other parts of the IELTS exam. Our academic IELTS website looks like this. We've got six full practice exams. We've got lots and lots of reading passages. You click this big red button to join our premium IELTS package. That's just above my head here. We are an official IELTS test registration center, certified agents. You're in great hands with us. You fill out the form and you use the discount code HAPPY9 uh, for a 20% discount, okay? It's the same idea on the general IELTS, gieltshelp.com. You simply click this big red button and you are good to go. So check us out there. Welcome Carolina, our chat moderator. Good to have you with us, uh, keeping the class um, on track. That's excellent. Now, uh, students, um, if you want to use our apps for your phone, our apps are Academic IELTS Help and General IELTS Help. You can download the apps from your app stores and the apps will link to the websites. You can follow us on Instagram, IELTS underscore AE help and G IELTS help. And you can keep track of our live IELTS class schedules. We post a lot of sample essays and great information. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, this is a subscribers chat class. So if you click subscribe, you can start uh, joining in on the chat. And if you have questions, uh, just send me an email to uh, adrian at aehelp.com. That's my email address. And we usually get back to students within 24 hours. Okay, uh, so uh, the schedule uh, right now, reading tomorrow, speaking part two and speaking part three. And then uh, on Sunday, we have a special class uh, that will be on Light Hall. It's a different platform. It's a free class for speaking. I'm going to stick it here. Um, that is a, a platform for live teaching. It's excellent. It's a lot of fun. It works really well. Um, so I highly recommend joining that speaking class on Sunday. And we have another one of those on the following Sunday, June 26th. The links are in the chat so you can sign up for those classes. All right, uh, so um, we're going to do some reading with our viewers today as well and to volunteer for reading. Um, we'll go through these steps in a few moments. But for right now, uh, let's take a look at um, our passage. The city of a thousand windows. Hmm, what could that be? The city of a thousand windows. Okay, so 
Um, looking at the title and predicting from the title is a very important step for success uh, on the IELTS exam. So when you have uh, this, um, this title, what kind of information can you infer? Okay, so your first step uh, should be to read the title and critically think about, critically, you can also think about, this is logically, uh, think about the information in the passage. Meaning, what is it about? Uh, why does the author present this information? How would the author logically present the information? Okay, so when you think about uh, this question, what is it about? What are your answers, students? So I, we've got lots of people in the class now. Monica, Rashika, Amra are members, Ghazi. Um, and we've got a lot of our regular students as well. Diana, Lois, Andre, Santosh. So when you read this title, A City of a Thousand Windows, um, what do you think this passage will be about? Okay, so try to answer this question first. Okay, what will this pass without reading any of the questions, without reading any of the passage? What comes to mind? What do you think this will be about? Logically, right? Just from this title, the titles, the titles are quite well thought out in the aisle, so they should give you um, an overall idea of the content. Okay. And certainly if I read a title like this, A City of a Thousand Doors or A City of a Thousand Windows, it definitely gives me some ideas of what I'm about to read. Um, what do you think it is? Uh, Leah says, big apartments. Okay, maybe. Apartments isn't the first thought that I would have. Okay. Uh, Rajneet says, windows or glass. Yeah, okay. Uh, Mian says, maybe a modern city. Yeah, possible because of all the skyscrapers. Okay. Rashika says a huge building with lots of windows, fresh air, houses with a lot of windows. Um, a beautiful place, says Mandeep. Okay. Simple thoughts, students, simple thoughts. Okay, so simple thoughts, um, in my mind, uh, what comes to mind for me is a historical city that has a lot of windows because of unique buildings. Now, if I think about a historical city that has a lot of windows because of unique buildings, um, what comes to mind for me is maybe like churches. Churches and religious buildings often have um, a lot of windows, okay? Okay, and then um, why does the author present this information? Because it is unique and tells an interesting story about a culture or civilization. Okay, so that's what comes to mind for me. I'm going to give you a little bit of insight into my brain. So a journey into the brain of Adrian. Um, so because it's unique, it tells some kind of interesting story. It's uh, going to obviously reveal some unique parts of a culture or a civilization. And how would the author logically present the information? Um, through good organization, chronologically, Uh, describing 
visually the information. Okay, uh, what does chronologically mean, students? So when we talk about places, when we talk about people, when we talk about certain events, uh, oftentimes writing the passages are organized chronologically. So if you're paying to chronological order, you can uh, remember the information much, much better. Um, so what does it mean uh, chronologically? Now, if you know a little bit of Latin, or if you know a little bit about Latin um, languages like Spanish or French and you know the word chronos, those of you who speak Spanish like Carolina will have an advantage here, can figure that out chronologically. It is step by step, uh, Leah, but what kind of step by step? Amra says orderly, but what kind of orderly? An Hong says dates. Yeah, chronos, um, a synonym for chrono or chronos means, guys, he says origin of time of the event. Yeah, the time order of the event. So time order of the events is the sequence, right? Time order of the events, or you could say time sequence. Okay. So definitely pay attention when there's chronological events happening and visualize, okay? Good authors, good writers write visual information, okay? All right, um, so let's uh, take a look at the questions now. That's our second step, okay? So we've thought about what this could be, why this could be, how this could be. Uh, let's take a look at this, so step two. is look at the questions quickly, not slowly, questions quickly uh, to get uh, even an even better idea of the contents of the passage. Okay, so read with me. Students, this is a reading class, so make sure to read with me, okay? So read together. All right, aloud. That means so you can hear yourself. Hopefully you're in a place where you can read aloud. If you're not, be careful, okay? Um, so let's read together. Let's read these questions together nice and quick. Um, so I'm not going to go slow here. I'm going to go nice and quick because I just want a better idea of what the passage contents are. I don't worry about the instructions. I can worry about that later when I'm answering the questions, okay? So title of a summary topic, all right? So City of a Thousand Windows, beginnings. Obviously chronological order makes sense then, right? Beginnings, uh, the mythical origin of Barat involves a battle between two something concerning the affections of a certain woman named Tamor and Sparag. They live on today in the form of two something surrounding the city of Barat. Violence strikes. Barat is thought to be about 2,500 years old. Soon after this time, when it was a Macedonian fortress, the something destroyed the city and killed all males over the age of 15. Ooh. Um, later, Barat was given the name something because of its importance in culture and beauty in the Byzantine Empire. If you're not able to go the same speed as me, that's okay. Just keep reading. Guarding Barat. Let's add that to the dictionary. Uh, the fortress of on top of Osum River's north bank is known as the something of Barat. It is over 1,500 years old and was repaired approximately 800 years ago. It once held many religious institutions, including a something and 20 Christian houses of worship. Questions 33 to 39. Yes, no, not given. Do not read these. They're confusing to read before the passage. They can easily confuse you about the passage, so don't read them. Okay. All right, we've got lots of those, so we're going to skip those. Um, and then we've got multiple choice. The strategy with multiple choice, only read the questions. OK, 
Okay. So read with me. 40. Um, which of the following phrases best describes the main aim of reading passage 3? Uh, this is a kind of an interesting question. As soon as you have this kind of multiple choice question, uh, that gives you a very important tip about correct reading. Okay, so to answer this question correctly, you will need to. Um, what's the missing part here? Okay, so. You will need to do what? In order to answer a question like, what is the main aim of this reading passage or the, the best description for this reading passage main goal or main aim is? Okay, uh, Shavam, you cannot predict questions on IELTS exams. That's a silly waste of time. Uh, study correct strategy, maximize your scores, practice your English as much as possible. That's my advice. My advice is don't try to predict questions on the exam. It's a horrible waste of time, okay? All right, um, Akril says, skim, read the passage. Uh, Amra says, comprehend this text, read the passage, says Lois. Yeah, you have to read the passage. You will need to read the passage. Skim reading will not be enough. Um, trying to skim and scan the whole passage for answers is a really bad idea. Skimming can be a useful technique for answering some questions, but not as the primary way to go through a reading passage. Um, it doesn't work, students. This is a reminder. I know a lot of our regular students know this. A lot of people who took the IELTS exam know this. Um, skim o Using only skim reading, I should say. Using only skim reading is a sure way to get a low band score. If you can get a good band score by only skim reading, then you can get a way better score by reading properly, okay? Band score, because uh, questions are paraphrased, uh, you cannot uh, identify not given questions. Um, okay, and, and this is an important one. This is a, one that many students don't think about, and uh, skimming, uh, only for one hour is extremely exhausting mentally and will have a negative impact uh, on your writing section score. because you will be psychologically fatigued, okay? So um, does that make sense, everybody? Okay, so using only skimming and scanning is a really bad idea, not just because it's not an effective strategy for the reading section, but also because your brain gets really tired. Like I, I could not imagine um, in a foreign language to try to skim read for answers for a whole hour and then write an essay in a structured and organized way, that's, that's a horrible combination. That's a combination for disaster, okay? All right, so you need to read. You need to have organization in your head during the reading section. You need to have organization in your head during the writing section. So only skim reading is a horrible, horrible idea, especially on the academic IELTS exam. General IELTS, section one, section two, they're short passages. I still don't recommend only skim reading, but all right, maybe, because there's short passages. Academic, definitely not, okay? All right, so keep that in mind. So let's do this. Now, this is a physical passage. It's about a city. It's about the history of a city. Um, it should be uh, information that we can clearly see. I think I, there's like an emoji where I'm doing this. 
Let's see if I can. It's tricky. You gotta have flexible hands for that. Um, so <laughs> there's an emoji where I'm doing that. Uh, you gotta see the passage. I'm sure some of you will find that emoji. I think those emojis are only available to uh, members of the channel. You can sign up to be a member if you want those funky emojis. Yeah, Emre, just <laughs> I knew some of you would find that emoji pretty quickly. So see the passage, right? See the passage. All right. I'm glad that Ghazi got a good laugh out of that. Okay, see the passage. Visualization is super important for processing information well, okay? If you don't see it, it's trouble. Okay, let's read. So let's do this. Let's read together. Again, remember, we're reading together, all right? And then for practice, I'll give a chance for everybody else to read also, okay? All right, um, here we go. From the top, read with me. And this speed that I'm reading is absolutely okay for the IELTS exam to get a high band score and finish in 20 minutes. Here we go, from the top. The city of a thousand windows. According to an Albanian legend, Barat, the city of a thousand windows, as it is affectionately known, was brought into being by a fight among the gods over the love of a woman. Two ancient giants represented by the nearby mountains, Tamor and Shparag, killed each other in the battle for the woman's heart. Emotionally distraught over their deaths, the woman cried unendingly. She cried so much that her tears of sorrow created the Osum River, which bisects Barat, and she drowned in this river of her own tears. Barat is an ancient city, and it is believed to be approximately 2,500 years old. Though the historical record is unclear, historians think the original inhabitants of the area were the ancient Greek tribe known as the Dasarite. Later, the settlement became a Macedonian fortress in what was then southern Illyria. One of the most gruesome events in the town's history occurred in 200 BC when it was attacked by the Roman army led by Lucius Apustius. His army destroyed the city's defenses and killed every male citizen over the age of 15 in what must have been a terrible massacre. During the Byzantine period following the fall of the western half of the Roman Empire, Barat was known as Polchiropolis, a name which was derived from Polcheria, the sister of Roman Emperor Theodosius II. This name was not given casually. Polcheria was highly respected throughout the empire and was considered a co-regent along her brother, the emperor. Barat was given this name because it was an important center of culture, wealth, and beauty in the empire. The heart of Barat for centuries has been the castle atop a rocky hill on the north bank of the Osum River. The citadel of Barat, as it is sometimes known, was began before the Roman invasion rebuilt by Theodosius II in 5th century CE and rebuilt again in the 13th century by the local Byzantine government. At its peak in the 1200s, the fortress housed thousands of citizens, 20 churches. The city was overwhelmingly Christian, one mosque and other shops and services. To this day, hundreds of Albanians live within the castle walls. Though most of the churches have been destroyed and the mosque exists only in minor ruins, much of the housing remains intact from the period. The early modern period of Barat, 16th to 18th centuries, was dominated by the Ottoman Empire. 
Construction during this time reflected both the Ottoman influence and the influence of Islam. By 1670, the city was home to a Muslim majority, less than a hundred years after being almost entirely Christian. The construction of this time period largely remains to the present day and is the origin of Barat's nickname, the, th the City of a Thousand Windows, as the Ottoman aesthetic favored relatively large and plentiful windows. This design, along with the city's layout along the hillside, embankment of the Osum River, which allows visitors to see much of the city's housing at one time, gave the impression that Barat was a city dominated by windows. To this day, visitors to the city quickly understand the city's nickname as the windows continue to dominate the cityscape. The end of the Ottoman Empire in the early 20th century coincided with the rise of Albanian nationalism and the creation of modern Albanian state in 1913. Albania endured Nazi occupation in the 20th century, as well as the iron-fisted rule of communist dictator Enver Hoxha from 1944 to 1985. Hoxha's rule was commemorated on the side of nearby Mount Sparag, one of the mythical giants uh, from Barat's origin legend mentioned above. In 1968, with the colossal painting of his name, visible for miles, the letters each 100 meters high and 60 meters wide dominated the skyline above Barat for decades. If you visit Barat today, however, the mountainside letters look slightly different. In 2012, as part of a documentary film project, a 58-year-old farmer and his nephew effectively switched the first two letters by power washing and repainting, resulting in the word never, adorning the mountainside. Never again would the proud Albanian people fall into the grips of dictatorship and never again would the people of Barat venerate their past oppressor. Barat, an ancient city which has seen rulers and regimes come and go, has been the one constant from the Illyrians, Romans and Byzantines to the Ottomans, Nazis and communists, Barat has been through a lot, and still the city of a thousand windows persists unbroken. Okay, so that was it, students, right there. And uh, we did have a historical timeline here. We did have chronological information. Amra, lots of information, but um, you can simplify it, and we can simplify this. So let's simplify this. Uh, who were kind of the first people um, that were in this region or we think were in this region 2,500 years ago? Okay, let's see how many of you actually cataloged um, the cultures and the timelines um, in this information. Okay, so 2,500 years ago. Uh, who were there? Ghazi says the Greeks. Yeah, were the Greeks. Um, also kind of know, like uh, I think a subgroup called the Ill something, Illrians or something. I don't know the exact spelling, but that's okay. Good job, Ghazi. Yeah, the Greeks. Okay, then um, what time came the next? Okay, so it tells you that at a certain time came another culture. Who were the other culture that came and when did they, co when did they come? Who came? and when they came. You have to read the whole passage and don't get tired reading, get interested. Create the catalog in your mind, students. So who came after the Greeks and when did they arrive? It was very visual, very clearly described, very dominant, powerful empire, okay? All right, very good, Ghazi. So Ghazi says it was the Romans. Good, Ghazi, so you're keeping track of this, right? Roman Empire. 
Yes, they did. The Roman Empire came, and Umrah says 200 BC. Yeah, 200 BC uh, before Christ, so basically um, that would be uh, 2300 years ago, right? And they say 200 BC, that's, that's 200 years before our modern uh, calculation of time. Okay, who came next? When did they come? The Byzantine. Now, the Byzantine were really Romans. If you know your uh, history, then you know that the Roman Empire, the um, uh, Eastern Roman Empire, became the Byzantine Empire, right? So, the Byzantine Empire. By the way, students, uh, for the IELTS, just a quick tip, it's definitely a good idea to read basic world history, okay? It is a very good idea to have a basic knowledge of um, ancient and modern world history. So I don't mean, you know, you don't need to know um, all the historical facts about different countries, but the basics, okay, of the big empires that came uh, in the world, um, you know, the Mongolian Empire, the Chinese Empire, the Roman Empire, um, the British Empire, the French Empire. So it's a good idea to know some of that basic uh, history. And if you don't know it, read it. It's interesting. It shapes the world of today, okay? Uh, especially modern history too, like 20th, uh, 19th century, 20th century, industrialization, the... Um, uh, the first, second world wars, uh, you should have some basic knowledge of that, okay? Um, and then, yeah, so Byzantine Empire and then the Ottoman Empire, that's right, okay? The Ottoman Empire came around uh, 16 CE, yep. So about 600 years ago, okay? The Byzantines were in there as well, definitely between these two. Yeah, so Nam is asking, so timelines must be memorized? Absolutely. I mean, if you're not able to follow the timeline, the historical timeline in this kind of a passage, what are you really reading, right? Um, it's going to cause you problems in university as well if you're in a history class or uh, anthropology class or in a lot of other social science classes and you're reading about the history of science or evolution of culture uh, and you can't keep track of what happened when yeah that's a gonna be a problem on your exam okay uh, remember the big difference students between IELTS and real university or college in the IELTS exam you have the reading passage there you can check um, in uh, real college and university, as you know, you don't have the reading. You have to use just your brain, right? You only have the questions. So it's a lot more challenging. Okay, so you have 600 years ago, uh, the Ottoman Empire. Um, and then, um, okay, uh, Shanti Ram, I'm in Canada. I'm in Canada, okay. So different empires brought with them different religions and different practices. We'll get to that in just a second. We're just looking at the culture and the timeline right now, okay? Um, so um, what happened next? Who, who came next? Okay, Amra says Albania about 100 years ago, roughly. finally became what we know today as Albania yeah and then somebody took control right so uh, that would be about what now uh, 80 years ago roughly German control and then uh, 60 years ago Roughly, okay, it doesn't have to be exact when you're recalling this. Um, it was uh, communist control. And 
And now it's a free city, a free state, right? So we kind of have this timeline and now um, you can uh, attach the different um, uh, pieces of information to it as well, okay? So when we did this reading, what was noteworthy about the Greeks or the Illyrians? Um, what, what do they add to this information? And notice how we're simplifying this here. Okay, so this is becoming much more effective now. And of course, in the real IELTS exam, this is happening quickly. So this is happening in your head. You read this, you keep track of this, and you already have this when you finish the IELTS uh, passage. You, you don't need to have all the details. You don't need to have all the information. You just need the order, okay? All right, so what did the Greeks add to this city of a thousand windows, okay? So what we're doing here in our simplification, really, is we're thinking about when, who, and what. Okay, so when, who, and what. And this works quite well with historical texts. Okay, so works well uh, with historical information. And of course, IELTS questions, a lot of them will be about this kind of when, who, and what. Um, so Ghazi said they built the ancient city, yes. Okay, uh, Rajni, to check your writing, use uh, our Grammarly link. It's in the last class, okay. Maybe, I don't know if Carolina's got a copy of that link, but you could add that into the chat. Carolina, if you can find it for me, please, for checking writing. Um, yeah, Mandeep says two legends fought for a woman's love leading to the Osum River. Yeah, some river. Fine, Mandeep. You remembered it partially, but um, Osum River. Yeah, so the uh, Greeks, the Illyrians, gave the legend. Okay, so originated the legend of Barat. Or Barat. Yeah. So the two giants fighting over the woman's love, the, then killing each other, then the woman crying and making the river that splits the city of Barat. So they created, they originated the the, the legend, right? Um, what did the Romans do? Those horrible Romans. What did they do? Okay, whatever you can remember. I think they gave a couple of points for each of these um, cultures, but what did they do? Okay, so we're going through the when, who, what, and I bet that you remember, okay? I think a lot of people, now that we're going through this kind of logical pattern, they're like, oh yeah, the Romans did that. Oh yeah, the Greeks did that. Yeah, Ghazi said they destroyed the city and killed people. Yeah, absolutely, Ghazi. It's terrible, but it's true. And killed all the men under the age of 15. Nam, in the real exam, you don't note down information like this. In the real exam, the only way that you note information like this is in your head when you're reading. Okay, as you get to the questions, you don't actually write it down. This you practice at home, and then when you get to your exam, you can do this in your head very quickly. Um, honestly, students, I have cataloged the times, the empires, and what each one did as soon as I finished the text. Okay, that's why I know what we're doing here. I haven't taught this text in a long time, and I don't memorize these texts, so I do this just like you. Okay. So I so this is for practice at home. Uh, during the real exam, you need to be able to do this as you read. Okay. Um, so just so you know, I have all of this uh, organized uh, in my head already. So I would already be looking at the questions and answering them very quickly, okay? Does that make sense? Okay, all right. 
Um, so, uh, they destroyed the city, killed all men under, uh, 15, okay, and then, um, after that came the Byzantine Empire at some point. If you don't remember all the information, I can't remember exactly when the Byzantines came, but it probably came a few hundred years later. And there's something else that happened, uh, I don't even know how to spell that, Byzantine, like that, Empire. Okay, um, so Byzantine Empire... Uh, the Romans and the Byzantine, what did they bring? They did bring something else that was very important. Okay. All right. So what did the Byzantine Empire bring? Before we go to uh, the Ottoman Empire, okay, uh, we need to think about what the Byzantine and the Roman Empire. There was one very important piece of... Um, information there. Amra said the city was named after Emperor's sister. That's a good piece of information as well. That was for the Romans. Yeah. And the Byzantine and the Romans, they brought what? Okay. They brought religion, right? to Barat, okay? So now I'll pick up a bit of speed and I'll show you what I mean by I have all this information in my head and maybe you have more, you can add information, but you know, whatever you have in your head. Uh, 600 years ago, the Ottoman Empire came, uh, took control, they uh, brought uh, Muslim uh, faith, um, converted the people and built uh, the uh, city with a thousand windows where it gets its name from right okay albania uh, became its own state and nation um 80 years ago germany took control that was during uh, Nazi rule okay uh, 60 years ago communist control communist uh, leader um, had name in big letters on mountains okay uh, now free city um, changed the letters on the mountains okay so that's all all right I don't remember every detail but I remember enough to know when an event happened, the culture, and some event that's connected to it. So when it happened, the culture that was in control of the area, and what event was connected to that, right? So 2,500 years ago, Greek Ilrians orig originated this legend of Barat. 2,300 years ago, Roman Empire, they obviously invaded, they warred, they controlled then um, Byzantine Empire, Roman Empire brought the Christian religion, the churches to Barat. Those were destroyed uh, 600 years ago, roughly. The Ottoman Empire brought the Muslim faith. Um, uh, they converted the people, built um, the uh, city of a thousand windows. Then finally it became a free state. It became Albania, its own nation. Then it was dragged into the war, World War uh, two, Germany took control and um, then it became communist uh, with Soviet influence, obviously, and that was it. They didn't really talk about the Soviet influence. Make sure not to add information, okay? All right, um, so uh, let's, uh, before we um, answer the question, so here we have all these lovely, lovely questions, and we're going to answer these. I want to give a chance for everybody to do a bit of reading practice, so we are going to do a bit of reading as a group, and um, we'll take uh, volunteers to read a paragraph, 
and then we'll kind of refresh on what happened. Maybe we'll pick up a little bit more information. When you're at home, uh, you should reread passages. So you shouldn't just read once and then answer and then go to another passage, read it once and then answer. It's not effective learning. Okay, a lot of students, they just go through a lot of reading materials without effective learning. You have to learn reading fluency and comprehension effectively. And that means rereading a lot of the time, okay? Did everybody catch that? That was really, really important. Let me make a note of that for you, okay? So many students get ready for IELTS by reading one passage after the next. This is usually not effective. Because your brain is not really processing information, okay? So the reason that it's not effective is because it lacks feedback, it lacks correction, and it lacks a deep level of processing, okay? So it is much better to read uh, passages twice, identify mistakes, uh, identify why they happened, Okay, uh, learn new vocabulary, focus on reading uh, fluency and comprehension as separate and combined elements. Okay. So don't just read one passage after the next thinking that that's going to get you um, a great score because there is n absolutely no way that you can predict the reading passage topic. When I sat the IELTS exam, one of my reading passages was about uh, farming in Australia. How in the world would I ever have predicted that I'm going to be reading about farming in Australia? There's just no way. And do you think that I read an article about farming or farming in Australia before my IELTS exam? Of course not, right? That's just silly. Um, so uh, you have to reread passages, okay? All right, um, so let's, uh, let's read this passage again. Let's get a deeper understanding, everybody. So let's go to our academic IELTS website, which is this one here. Our academic IELTS uh, website is uh, aehelp.com, okay, www.aehelp.com. Um, and uh, when you go to the website, uh, create a full user account by clicking this red button. Uh, you get our premium IELTS package, one-time payment, lifetime access, or you can try it for free. You don't have to pay. Um, we're not gonna force you to pay to continue. So you can click on that green button that's right beside or behind, sorry, I should say my head, okay? So once you create your paid or free uh, account, it doesn't matter which one, uh, then you have access to your My Student account. If you already registered before, then log into your My Student account. Um, which is uh, here at the uh, top of the page. Let's see, can I try to kind of get you there? But it's it's above that purple line. You'll see it there anyway. So you're in your My Student account, um, and uh, in your My Student account, uh, please click on the uh, blue Student Partner Speaking button. So you see this blue. Um, uh, student partner speaking that's just above my head here there okay uh, so student partner speaking by the way there's lots of IELTS passages here lots of materials we've got tons and tons we're world leaders when it really comes to IELTS uh, preparation um, so click on that student partner speaking accept the terms it means that you're going to um, 
be respectful and accept responsibility for your own speaking. And then you're in this uh, list of people that are here. And then you can see there's lots of people here already. And um, then you can volunteer. You'll see me as master, okay? So uh, my handle will be uh, master. Let me see if we can, yeah. So you'll see master um, and click on the blue envelope. Send me a message and then I will uh, choose some volunteers to do a bit of reading and we'll do the questions together with the volunteers as well, okay? All right, um, so uh, Pradeep here is ready to go. Pradeep, are you ready? Let's see if we can reach out to Pradeep. Pradeep will read and I'll give you a little bit of advice on your reading as well, so uh, what you need to do um, and what you need to focus on, okay? So Pradeep, I see that you volunteered. Um, just reaching out to you there, perfect. Let's talk to Pradeep. All right, Pradeep. Hi, Pradeep. I can't hear you. Yes. Oh, there you are, perfect. How are you, Pradeep? I'm doing great. Thank you. All right, Pradeep, are you ready for a bit of reading? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, cool. Now, Pradeep, just before we get started on the reading, um, you probably saw that there are a lot of interesting words in this reading, right? Like the names of places and the names of cultures. Mm hmm. Yeah, like uh, like the name of um, the uh, Roman emperor's sister, Pulcheria. Okay, I'll be honest with you, Pradeep. I have no idea how to pronounce some of these names. Okay, they're coming. I from... also don't have any idea about this. <laughs> right. So, do you know what we need to do? Yeah, actually, I don't know anything about this. Don't do anything. Just read whatever you think is the right way and don't let it stop you. One mistake that people make is they try to actually read it correctly and it breaks their concentration and their focus. So when you see strange names and you you know their names because they're capital letters, right? They're, they're, they start with big letters. Um, just read it. Read through it. Okay. So don't, don't try to pronounce it correctly. Just read it. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So whenever you're ready, uh, go from the top here. So always read from the title. So start with the city of a thousand windows and I'll get you to read the uh, first two paragraphs. Okay. Okay. May I start? Yeah, absolutely. It's the city of a thousand windows. According to an Albanian legend, Birat, the city of a thousand windows as it is affectionately known was brought into being by a fight among the god over the love of a woman. Two ancient giants represented by the nearby mountains, Tomer and Sipra, killed each other in the battle for the woman's heart. Economically distracted over the death, the woman cried unendingly. She cried so much that her tear of sorrow created the ocean river which bisects Virat and she drowned in the river of her own tears. Virat is an ancient city and is believed to approximately 2500 years old. Though the historical record is unclear, historian thinks the original inhabitants of the area were the ancient Greek tribute known as Dasareta. Later the settlement became as Macrodanian for fortress in what in what was the in what was then southern Irlia. One of the most grim, gruesome event in the town's history occurred in 200 BC when it was attacked by the Roman army led by Lucius Aptitus. His army destroyed the city's defense and killed every male citizen over the age of 15 in what must have been a terrible massacre. Very nice reading. Okay, so good news here. Uh, your reading is your fluency, like how fast you're reading and your accuracy is definitely enough to get a band seven, eight, maybe even a band nine in the reading section. Okay. So you're reading nice and fluently. 
you did a really good job of not stopping for those names. Notice how when you didn't stop for those names, it was just fluent, right? Like I just, just pronounced whatever it came in my mind. <laughs> and that was perfect. That's exactly what you need to do. That's exactly what you need to do. You know, nobody's going to test you. Oh, did you pronounce that correctly? You're, no, you're going to fail IELTS. Um, so yeah, that was perfectly done. That's a, that was a great example of how to do this. Um, and that often happens in IELTS where you have these kind of strange names or uh, things. So, so don't don't let those break your concentration. That was really, really good. Um, the only one word where you read it in a bit of an awkward way and that could confuse your uh, comprehension is this word here, emotionally distraught. You read it as economically. That's a different word. So careful not to uh, change words, right? That was emotionally okay. distraught. Now, you know, some words like distraught might be a new word for you. Again, don't yes, worry. That's new for me. Yeah, it's 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 a higher level word. Don't worry about it. Um, just read, right? Understand as much as you can. Get to the questions, and then if you have to figure it out later, then deal with it later. But for now, you know, um, distraught means like um, it means um, uh, like stressed out or really um, in a in in a depressed kind of state so very sad about it Ext extremely sad state yeah an extremely sad state an extremely sad and problematic state that's distraught okay so that's what it means but you don't have to worry about it you can kind of get it from the context emotionally distraught over the deaths the woman cried so you can figure out that it means like a very sad uh, worried stressed out state okay all right, that was good. Thank you so much for reading those two paragraphs. I'm going to uh, get someone else to help me with the next two paragraphs. Keep that up, okay? So that's how you want to practice your reading. Um, you're doing a good job. And um, practice reading aloud, just like you did now, okay? Okay. All right, thank you so much, uh, Pradeep, for being the first, and uh, hang around for the questions, okay? Okay, you're welcome, Andrew. Okay. All right. We'll talk to you later. Bye, Pradeep. Okay. Bye. All right. That was Pradeep. Give Pradeep a thumbs up. That was really good. Okay. So that was a really, uh, really good. Uh, yeah. Um, Afdal says distraught is like desperate. Yeah. Desperate and like uh, just really confused and worried and sad in the head. Distraught. Okay. All right. Um, let's take another volunteer. Um, Ghazi, I thought you volunteered earlier, but I don't see it now. Uh, let's try um, uh, somebody new. So Money Deep, um, Amrit, I know you're volunteering, but you've done it in the past. So let's try to see if Afdal is here. Afdal says, can I try? Yeah, let's try to take some new people. So sure. Are you ready? All right. Okay, and uh, again, we'll do the same. We'll just keep reading and then we'll get to these questions here. We've got lots of time. We've got 37 minutes to finish this up and get to the questions and talk strategy on the questions as well. So hang in there, okay? When you're practicing for reading at home, this is what you want to do. Take your time, pay attention, read, reread, learn new words, okay? Be effective in your learning. All right, Afdal. Hi, Afdal. I can't hear you yet. We'll give it a second. Maybe there's a delay in your voice. Afdal, uh, check your microphone settings. Uh, check your connection. Ideally, um, you're using a Wi-Fi or LAN connection, and you have enabled your browser uh, for uh, your microphone and your speaker. Also, students, if you're using Apple, it could be tricky. Apple has special kinds of permissions. I'm not a big Apple user, but I know that Apples can be a bit problematic for Apple computers. So, all right, Afdal, uh, try again later. So troubleshoot, check it out, try with another person, and then we'll try again later, okay? All right, um, let's, uh, let's see who else is here. Okay, Money Deep, sure, why not? Sure, are you ready?
All right. I'm just grabbing. So you have to, you know, say I want to volunteer. I won't randomly choose you because I don't know if you're in a situation where you can speak. Like I don't want to call somebody if they're driving a car. And if you're driving a car, you definitely should not be doing this. Okay. It's very dangerous. All right. And Carolina has kindly put the instructions into the chat on how to join. Okay. So you go to the website, create an account, free or paid, go to student partner speaking, look for the name master, okay? Dan. Hi, Manny Deep. That was fast. It didn't even ring. You just picked up. Yes, I was ready. <laughs> you were certain. You certainly were. Um, okay. Uh, that's a good way to be in the reading section. That's how you want to be. You want to be that ready for those high yeah. band scores. Okay, Manny Deep. Um, so let's get right into it. Uh, you are reading from the third paragraph, which is during the Byzantine period. Same instruction. If you don't know the pronunciation, just read through it. Okay. Um, whenever sure. you're ready, begin. During the Byzantine period, following the fall of the western half of the Roman Empire, Herat was known as uh, Pulcheripolis, a name which was derived from Pulcheria, the sister of Roman Emperor Theodosius II. This name was not given casually. Pulcheria was highly respected throughout the empire and was considered a co-regent alongside her brother, the emperor. Herat was given this name because it was an important center of culture, wealth and beauty in the empire. Keep going. The heat of Berat for centuries has been the cas castle to atop a rock hill on the north bank of the awesome river. The citadel of Berat, as it is sometimes known, was begun before the Roman invasion rebuilt by Thesodius II in the 5th century CE and rebuilt again in the 30th, uh, 13th century by the local Byzantine government. At its peak in the 200s, the fortress thousand, thousand of, uh, housed thousands of citizens, 20 churches. The city was overwhelmingly, uh, overwhelmingly Christian. One mosque and the other shops and services. To this day, hundreds of Albanians live within the castle walls. Though most of the churches have been destroyed and the mosque ex uh, exists only in minor ruins, much of the housing remains intact from the period. Okay, great. All right, good reading, good reading. Okay, again, that's, um, so, uh, I, you know, a lot of students worry that they don't read fast enough or well enough um, for high marks on the IELTS exam, but I disagree. I think a lot of students actually read perfectly fine for, um, you know, uh, finishing the text in 20 minutes. I think with that speed, you would be finished this whole passage within five to six minutes, leaving you uh, 14 minutes for the questions. That means like a whole minute on average for each question. That's a lot of time. Um, the trick is not reading fast or the trick is reading effectively, right? And I, that's what I hope a lot of people are realizing here. It's not the speed that's the problem. I think that's where a lot of uh, people are confused, but it's the efficiency of reading. I think that's the problem for many candidates in IELTS. Having said that, okay, Money Deep, uh, this paragraph yeah. that we just read, we didn't actually talk about this before when we were talking about, you know, what we read in the passage. And this is kind of an important paragraph. We almost left out this paragraph completely. This last paragraph that you read about, what was it focusing on? So what is the, what is the main goal of the author in this paragraph? Uh, the author was talking about the uh, rebuilt uh, by the Thesodesius uh, Second. What was rebuilt? Um, especially the ca castle, mm -hmm. castle at top. Yeah. So this exactly. So to give a very good answer to my question, uh, Mani Deep, it would be this paragraph is about the famous landmark of Bharat. This landmark is the castle that's on top of Bharat. So in this case, visually, right, what you should be seeing is that, okay, here we have the city of uh, Bharat. Okay, so here's Bharat. Um, and um, I'm starting to get the picture in my head, even though I've never actually, I'm curious, I'll Google it after the class, I've never seen the city. But I'm guessing that the city is kind of like a hill. It's obviously got these mountains that it's talking about. 
and um, it's got this uh, river that's kind of flowing through the middle of it and somewhere here um, there's a castle yeah. right um, that's kind of the like the the iconic uh, part of Barat so by this paragraph uh, as a good reader, you should definitely start to see a pretty good image of Bharat, even if you've never seen the city. Do you see what I mean yeah. about this, Money Deep? Like, you should see the <laughs> mountains on the two sides that are the giants. You should see the river in the middle that this woman cried. And we should see this castle that's almost 2,000 years old and has been built, rebuilt, and rebuilt again. Okay? Yeah. Um, if we're not seeing that, like if, if we're doing the IELTS exam and we're not seeing any of this, it will definitely be really difficult to get a good mark and finish on time. Okay? Sure. Makes sense, right? Yes. Okay. All right. Otherwise, good reading. So make sure to focus on that visual reading, Money Deep, okay? Yeah. Like uh, when we were doing the initial uh, set of analysis, I do remember the Theodosius uh, second, but uh, I even I forgot completely about the paragraph. Yeah, I, I didn't see too many people saying, hey, we forgot about the castle of Barat. So that yep. shows how much we need to improve our visual reading, right? Like, how do you forget about reading about a castle? Um, so yep. yeah, absolutely. Um, good, Money Deep, keep up the good studies and just hang in there. We'll get to the questions soon, okay? I'm gonna find somebody else for the rest of the passage, all right? Sure, Adrian, thanks okay. for the opportunity. Absolutely. All right, that was Money Deep. Keep up the good studies, guys. That's really good. That's what you want to do. All right, um, let me see here. Uh, let's give Amrit a chance. Amrit's always so supportive with uh, super chat donations and um, just very studious all around. So Amrit, let's let's give you a chance here. Are you ready? I'm hoping it's the right Amrit too, because there are we do have multiple Amrits. If it's not, well, hey, we'll be your name, brother. Okay, Amrit, if you are there and if you're ready to read. Um, then ping me back and say I am ready. Okay, so reading, reading, reading. Thank you for the support, by the way, uh, students in the uh, chat there, um, giving each other thumbs up and high fives. Uh, Need to <laughs> with lots of little yellow thumbs up people. Um, yeah, it's great. Okay, some of you are using my hand. That's my hand thumbs up. Amrit, are you still there? Are you not? I don't see it. I don't see a response. So, oh, bottom side. Okay, Amrit's calling me. All right. Hi, Amrit. Hi, sir. How are you? I am doing good, thank you. All right. It was smart of you to give me a call back there. Um, all right, Amrit, yeah, are you different, Amrit? Right? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. That's, that's okay, though. The other Amrit that's out there. I will give you a chance also, okay? So hang in there. If you saw this, maybe you'll help us with the questions. Okay, Amrit, um, let's uh, get back to the passage here. So um, read a couple of paragraphs, okay? Let's start from uh, the early modern period of Bharat, okay? Whenever you're ready. Okay, so... <clears throat> The early modern period of Birar, 16th and 18th century, was dominated by the Ottoman Imperial constructions during the period reflected both Ottoman influence and influence of Islam. By 1617, the city was home to a Muslim majority, less than 100 years after being almost entirely Christians. The constructions of this time period largely remain to the present day, and it is the origin of Birar's nickname. The city of a thousand windows has a Ottoman aesthetic, favored relatively large and plentiful windows. This design, along with the city's layout along the hillside, embankment of the Azum River, which allow visitors to see much of the city's housing at one time, gave the impression that Binant was a city dominated by windows. To this day, the visitor to the city quickly understand the city's nickname as the windows continue to dominate the cityscape. Okay, keep reading. The end of the Ottoman Empire in the early 20th century considered, can you scroll? Mm -hmm.
coincided with the rise of the Albanian nationalism and the creations of modern the Albanian state in 1930. The Albanian and the old Nazi occupation in the 20th century as well as the unfisted rule of the communist and dictator Anwar Hoxham from 1944 to 1985. The Hoxha's rule was commemorated on the side of nearby Mount Shapriok, one of the mythical giants from the Beard's origi origin region mentioned above in 1968 with the closal painting of his name. Visible for miles, the letters age 100 meters high and 60 meters wide dominated the skyline about Birat for decades. If you visit Birat today, however, the mount mountainside letters look slightly different. In 2012, in 20, uh, 2012, as a part of documentary film projector, a 48 years old farmer and his nephew effectively switched the first two letters by power washing and repainting, resulting in the word never adorning the mount, mountain side. Ne never again would, uh, would the proud Albanian people fall into the grips of the dictatorship, and never again would the people of Birat venerate their past oppressor. The Birat, an Asian city which has seen rulers and uh, uh, regimes came and go and has been one constant from the Aleranians, Romans and Byzantines to the Can you scroll, scroll down mm -hmm. sir? It's coming. Ottomans and Nazis and communists, Birat has been through a lot, and still the city of a thousand windows persists unbroken. Okay, good. All right. Amrit, good reading. All right, <clears throat> so the fluency was pretty good. Um, and, uh, you know, you, you got stuck a couple of times, but overall it was not bad. I'm a bit worried about your comprehension when you're reading aloud like this, okay? And I think um, that um, uh, there are a couple ways that you can improve your comprehension, so understanding more, okay? Your speed is okay, but uh, I can tell that comprehension might be a little bit of a problem based on the words where you're getting stuck, okay? So if I go back here to uh, this paragraph where you started, the end of the Ottoman Empire, uh, here are two tips for you, Amrit, okay? When you're practicing at home, uh, tip number one, uh, when you come across a word that's maybe new or tricky for you, like let's say the word coincided, okay? Uh, stop and check it. So check how it's pronounced. You can Google it, okay? And Google can use voice, so Google can actually say coincided. They will tell you the correct, correct pronunciation, and then you want to repeat this word twice. So coincided, coincided. Can you just repeat with me? Coincided. Coincided. Con coincided. Okay. Coincided means happened at the same time. What does it mean, Amrit? Okay, sir. That happened at the same time. Absolutely. Okay, so get the definition and then reread the sentence. So the end of the Ottoman Empire in the early 20th century coincided with the rise of Albanian nationalism and the creation of the modern Albanian state in 1913. So now we can make sense that the Ottoman Empire ended and the Albanian state was created at the same time, so coincided. So now I've increased my comprehension and to do that, um, slow down a bit when you're rereading and enunciate even more. Sometimes I felt I'm re like your reading is a bit flat you did stop at the commas, you did stop at the periods, but overall for me, it felt a little bit flat, okay? Okay, sir. So what you want to do is intonate more, even exaggerate a little bit, like the end of the Ottoman Empire, almost like you're making a documentary movie, okay? The end of the Ottoman Empire in the early 20th century coincided with the rise of the Albanian nationalism and the creation of the modern Albanian state 
in 1913, right? Like it sounds kind of like a, a history movie, right? Okay. All right. So read like that just so that you emphasize the meaning of the content. Practice that a little bit and you'll get what I mean. Okay. So you'll start to feel it. Okay. All right. So get the meaning of the words. Once you have the meaning of the words, then read again with a lot of emphasis. Okay. Okay, sir. Got it. All right. Okay. Um, we're going to move to the questions and I'm going to find somebody else for that, Amrit. But keep up the good practice. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you so much for giving me a nice chance. Absolutely. And good luck on your upcoming exam. You've got uh, eight days, so keep going, okay? Okay, sir. Uh, thank right. you so much. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye, Amrit. All right. Thumbs up for Amrit. That was really good. You have to be um, very uh, brave for that. All right. Um, let's go. Let, we got a Milena at the bottom here. Let's see if Milena would like to be a volunteer for some questions. Milena, are you ready? I will help you, Milena. So don't, uh, Milena, so don't worry if you're not sure about these questions yet. I'm here to help, okay? Hopefully, Milena, you were in the class for the most part, so you've read most of the text, Milena, and let's hope we can connect here. Hi, Milena. Hey. Uh, Milena, can you mute YouTube so we're not getting feedback from the audio? Of course. Perfect. All right. Am I pronouncing your name correctly, Milena? Mm, so basically, I am from Armenia and uh, my name is Milena. But um, every time native English speakers call me Milena, but. Okay, um, but it's Milena. They call me Milena. <laughs> Of course. Milena. Yeah, so I'm going to call you the way your mother planned to call you, okay? So I'm going to call you <laughs> Milena. Um, the world's becoming international, so people should kind of fight for the correct pronunciation of their names. Um, okay, so Milena, um, awesome. Are you familiar with Albania's history? Um, not at all. <laughs> not at all. Fair enough. All right, neither am I. Uh, so we're in the same boat, but let's try to solve these questions together now that we've read a little bit about the city of Barat. So here um, we have the title of the summary topic and um, it's really good that we have kind of a chronological order of information in our head. So we know that it was the Greeks, then the Romans, then the Byzantines because this question clearly follows some of that uh, organization. So what I would like you to do to solve this kind of question, the summary topic, is first you want to use always your own knowledge. So what you understood from the text. And then if you need help, you can go back to the text. So all I want you to do is read this uh, first part, title of summary, the beginnings, read question 27, 28, and uh, let's try to figure out the answers together. If you need a bit of help, I'm here to help you, okay? So whenever you're ready, start from title of summary topic. Okay, I'm ready. Go for it. The mythical origin of Pertret involves a battle between two twenty-seven something concerning the affection of a certain woman named Tomar and Spirig. They live on today in the form of two twenty-eight something surrounding the city of Bertred. Barat, yeah, whatever, however we pronounce that. Okay, so what do you think number 27 is? I think we have to go back to the text. I don't think so. I think we can do it. Without <laughs> it. Okay, so um, do you, did you read the text? Were you here for the beginning? Uh, yeah. Okay, so remember the legend of Barat? It says that there was a fight. Uh, I, I remember the text said fight. Here they just use the word battle instead of fight. Uh, who, who was fighting for this woman's love? Mm, I don't remember, certainly. You don't remember who was fighting? I think somebody in the chat can help us. I can see that Amra and Rashik have already put some answers in there. It was very visual. Okay, well, you know what? Um, we're going to leave 27 then. We'll come back to 27. Okay, um, and then let's keep reading. So the affections of a certain woman named Tomor and Shparag. They live on today in the form of to something surrounding the city of Barat. What is surrounding the city of Barat? 
Mountains. So what do you think the answer is for question 28? Mountains. Two. Stay with mountains, your answer. So. Mountains, yeah. right? Mountains, two mountains. Okay. Um, okay, so you've got question 28. It's mountains. Be So be confident. Okay, Melina, be confident in your answer. Okay, mountains. And mountains is correct, plural, because it's two, right? So mountains, correct answer, all right? You can't, uh, Melina, to get a high band score in the IELTS, you can't search for every answer. It doesn't work, okay? And everybody who's done the IELTS knows this, that you cannot effectively complete the reading section if you're searching for every single answer. You have to try to get at least half of them just from your own brain, from using knowledge from your own head, okay? So this one you knew, this one you have, mountains. Now, um, before we search for 27, we might be able to figure out 27 after this answer. So, um, so named Tomor and Sparag, they live on today in the form of two mountains surrounding the city of Barat. So what are those two mountains representing? What were they originally that were fighting with each other? I can't remember. Okay, so then in this case, we would go back. Uh, where will we find this in the text? At the start, in the middle, or the end? At the start. Right. And usually the order is start, to middle, finish, and the questions follow the same order, but not always. Okay, be careful. Sometimes a question like this could be taken from the middle of the text as well. Okay, so there's some people, like some teachers will say, oh, it's always in the order of the text. It's often in the order of the text, but not always. Okay, so you have to be careful. Okay, uh, let's go back then to the beginning. Um, and um, now, instead of just randomly searching, okay, we know that we've gotten the answer for represented uh, by the nearby mountains Tomor and Sparag because we just answered that, right? So this is really easy for our eyes to find, okay? So um, who was fighting for the love of the woman? Are you reading right now, Melina? Can I read? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm looking for your answer for 27 now. So who do you think? I'm just asking you, who do you think? You, you, you should see the answer now. So who do you think was fighting for? Because here we have fight among, right? So we're looking for the paraphrase. That's the battle, right? Gods. That's right, uh, gods. Okay, so what's the correct answer then for 27? God was right hand. Right, okay. So it says here giants, and a lot of students actually said giants, but unfortunately that would probably be marked wrong. The answer that they're looking for is gods. Why is gods a better answer than giants? Milena, what do you think? Mm. Basically, I think that a giants um, were like um, like humans, but uh... could be. You're right. It could be. So giants is more general. Giants can describe gods, can describe very large humans, can describe other mythical creatures like ogres or dragons. Uh, so giants is more general. And here they're looking for a more specific answer. So the more accurate answer is gods. So you do have to be careful in the exam and always find the more specific answer. Now, um, here's something interesting. Uh, gods, is it spelled G-O-D-S with a small G or with a big G? like G-O-D-S. I think um, plural of the word God is with uh, little. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. Because the only God that is spelt with a big G in English is the Christian or Muslim God, like the God, right? The, the one God. So that's the only one. Anytime that we're referring to other gods, like gods in Shintoism or um, in Hinduism, um, it's always spelt with a small G for plurals. Okay, so it's an interesting one, tricky one, but an interesting one. 
Okay, good. Um, let's keep going a little bit, okay? So let's go to the next one. You'll get the idea, you'll get the hang of it. So here, a really important tip, Malena, is don't jump to the text right away as soon as you see that there's a question that you don't know the answer to, especially when it's one section like this, so beginnings. Um, then try to answer both of the questions. And if you can answer the second one, that will help you to answer the first one faster, okay? Okay. All right. Okay, let's try it with violence strikes. So whenever you're ready, um, read this violence strikes. Okay. Okay. Barrett is told to be about 2,500 years old, soon after this time when it was a Macedonian fortress. The 29-something destroyed the city and killed all males over the age of uh, 15. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Later, Beret was given the name 30 something something uh, because of its importance in culture and beauty in the Byzantine Empire. Okay, good. So, uh, number 29, what's the answer? Who destroyed the city and killed all the males over the age of 15? God. No, God did not destroy the city and kill males over the age of 15. Who did? If, remember the history? So who were there first? The Greeks. Who came after the Greeks? The Illyrians. Roman. Yes, exactly. The Romans, and try to be a little bit more specific. So here, the instructions do say no more than two words. So when it's no more than two words, um, and this is for everybody who's watching, you want to be specific. It's not just the Romans, because there were a lot of Romans that lived during that time all over the world, right? So to be more specific, what would be a better answer than Roman? The Roman what? You have half of the answer, but you need to be more specific. And a couple people in the uh, in the chat have it, and one of them is even using Gazi is using an exclamation mark to try to help you with the second word. So you always want to be specific, not the Romans in general, right? But it's the Roman army. Exactly, the Roman army. So, you know, it's important in life to be specific, right? Um, we tend to make this mistake all the time where we uh, encapsulate an entire group of people as the ones doing something. Like right now, a lot of people are saying the Russians are invading Ukraine. No, the Russian army is invading Ukraine. It's not all the Russians around the world that are doing it, right? So we have to be careful how we uh, choose our answers. And the IELTS, academic IELTS, you have to be specific, right? So it's the Roman army that destroyed the city and killed uh, all of them, okay? The Roman armies for plural, but Rom the Roman army is okay. All right, um, okay, so let's keep going. So the Roman army destroyed the city and killed all males over the age of 15. Careful with the R here, it has to be a capital letter because it's the name of that the empire. Army. Yeah, army can be small in this case, interestingly, um, because it's not part of the whole name, it's just the word, so Roman army. Okay, or Roman soldiers would be okay as well. Assad is asking, could I use soldiers? Yes, you could, because soldiers is a synonym for army, so both are okay there. All right, and they use both. Um, so later, Barat was given the name. Uh, what was the name that was given to Barat later on? Melinda. Keep your answer simple. Mm -hmm. Give me the name. Biz uh, business? I don't know. The answer here that you should be telling me is, I don't know. <laughs> okay, I don't know what name they gave it later on. Um, but I do remember something, okay? Um, do you remember something about the emperor's sister? 
Um, no. No? Okay, well, there was something. So careful with your comprehension then, Melina, because you should be remembering these details. So when the Romans destroyed it, and then it was the Roman Empire and the Byzantine Empire, they named it after a Roman emperor's sister, who was a very important and very beautiful person. And I don't remember her name because it was quite a tricky name, but I do remember that it was kind of somewhere in the middle of the passage, and it started with a P, with a big P. I do remember that. So here, you see all these words with the P. Um, so P and then P right there and P right there. So I did not remember this word. So this was the name of the Empress or the Emperor's sister, Pulcheropolis. And then they na they uh, they derived that from the word Pulcheria. So Barat Pulcheria. was known as this. This is the name of the city. And this is the name of the empress. Oh. So the empress or the, the emperor's sister is Pulcheria and the name of the city is Pulcheriopolis. Pulcheriopolis. Yeah. Uh, in the IELTS, you can copy paste uh, in the computer-based exam. So I'm just gonna copy and paste the answer if I can do that for this question. So copy, paste, and I have correct spelling and correct answer, okay? Um, so you don't have to remember all the answers from the passage, Melina, but you do have to remember the idea. So here you should remember that it was after an emperor's sister and it was something starting with a P, okay? Okay. All right. Um, so that's how you go about it. So just to give you a quick recap, Melina, for these four questions that we did, okay? Um, you should be able to answer mountains and Roman army without looking at the text. And then if you're answering 27, gods, and number 30, Pulcheriopolis, you should be able to find the answers quite quickly if you understood the text at least 60%, okay? Okay. All right, so focus on that. Focus on having at least 60% comprehension, okay? Okay. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Milena, for volunteering and helping me explain this to all of our viewers and, and being with us today. Thank you a ton. Okay. Thank you, too. All right. Have a great rest of your day and come back for tomorrow's speaking classes, okay? Of course. Bye-bye. Awesome. Okay. Bye. All right. So that was Milena. Um, okay. Yes, Amrit, you, in the computer-based exam, if you have that kind of a question, you can copy-paste. And I believe you can even in the reading section. Carolina might know more about that. But I think most of the reading section questions, I didn't actually have to write anything. I just had to drag and drop so it's easier. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, students, uh, we have run out of time, but that is okay. Um, it's better to understand than to rush. All right. So... These last questions, guarding Barat, okay, and the yes, no, not given questions, try to do these in your own time and then email me your answers and I will email you back the answer key, okay? And this last question as well, the main uh, aim of the passage. So you will find these uh, in the video, that's why I'm going to these, and then you can email me uh, your answers. Okay, so again, here are the last few um, yes, no, not given questions. Here are the first few yes, no, not given questions. Uh, send me the answers in an email. Here is my email address. My email address is uh, adrian at aehelp.com and I will send you back the answer key, okay? You should not be searching for all of your answers. You should be able to answer at least half of these based on the reading that we've just done, all right? But if you're not sure, read again, check, okay? Practice effective strategy. All right, students, uh, to learn lots more, to get lots more practice exams, definitely visit us on our website, um, aehelp.com. We just used that today uh, for interacting with our students, and you can interact with each other on the website as well. Um, you can join our premium IELTS package by clicking this big red button or try it for free with the green button. Use that code that I showed you, uh, HAPPY9, okay? So the discount code is HAPPY9. 
Thank you, subscribers. So it was a subscribers chat class, okay? Um, and so uh, make sure to subscribe to our channel so that, uh, you know, hit the notification button um, so that you know when all of our live classes are going. Uh, you are very welcome, Elena. Again, thank you for participating. Um, keep it up, Amrit, uh, Amrit Rashika, uh, Carolina, thank you for moderating. Um, I am uh, signing out uh, for now from uh, beautiful Victoria here on the uh, west coast of uh, Canada. One last time, aehelp.com for academic outs, galtshelp.com for general outs. I will be back tomorrow at the same time with speaking. And as with the earlier class, I will do two speaking classes, one um, at 5.30 a.m. Vancouver time and one at 7.30 a.m. Vancouver time. So hopefully I will see you there. Have a great start to your weekend, everyone. Much love to you all. Bye for now.